Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a white, red and green or Naya colored elf deck featuring Voya, Jaws of the Conclave as our commander. This 5 mana 5 5 has Vigilance, Trample and Ward 3 and says whenever it attacks put X plus one plus one counters on each creature we control where X is the number of elves we control and then we get to draw a card for each wolf we control which includes Voya itself. So we're definitely focusing on the elves in this deck which not only are gonna help pump the team with those plus one counters but also make it easier to deploy Voya ahead of schedule and especially in combination with the Ward 3 ability makes it very hard for the opponent to interact with Voya favorably once it's on the battlefield. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories starting with our removal, a few ways to interact with the opponent's game plan, maybe ways to destroy artifacts and enchantments. And then we've got a few ways to give our creatures haste, can be quite synergistic with our commander if we get to attack with it right away and pump the team, but can also be quite good with our mana elves which we can now maybe immediately tap for mana, making it easier to deploy the rest of our hand and build kind of that critical mass of elves on the battlefield to win the game. Then we get to our mana acceleration, which is mostly comprised of elves. At 1 and 2 mana we've got some non-elf creatures as well, which will maximize our chances of playing Voya on turn 3, which is the ultimate goal. So we'll take as many of those 1 mana accelerants as we can get our hands on. And then we continue our mana acceleration at 3 plus mana with more elves. Some of them can make more than 1 mana if we tamp them, so that can be quite powerful and makes it easier to redeploy Voya if it does get removed. And then we've got even more elves here rounding out our creature department. And uh, some of these can also maybe pump the rest of the team, provide some utility. And we even have two copies of Tulsimir, which comes with an elf and a wolf. So it can not only increase our elf count, but also draws extra cards by making that wolf token if Voya attacks. And then uh, last but not least, we've got our miscellaneous category, which includes mostly additional card draw effects, cards like Guardian Project and Beast Whisper, rewarding us for playing additional creatures, which is most of our deck. And then we've got Mask with Nexus as a fun one, turning all our creatures into both elves and wolves, so Voya gets to maximize its potential. And then Roaming Throne can also maybe double some triggers, either from our elves or our wolves. And then and now time for the deep dive, starting with our removal, we've got Swords to Plowshares at 1 mana, and then at 2 mana, Fateful Absence and Get Lost are quite versatile. And then Masked Vandal counts as a changeling, so also an elf and a wolf for Voya purposes, and can exile an opposing artifact or enchantment, assuming there's a creature in our graveyard we can exile. Then the Bodyguard, an elf that can exile an opposing creature when it enters. Reclamation Sage destroys an artifact or enchantment. And then a Domri can accelerate our mana, makes our creatures uncounterable, which can also matter. And then can also fight opposing creatures with a minus two. It's also pretty good to fight with Voya since it has that built-in protection, so we're less likely to get blown out. And then we've got our haste enablers, starting with Mass Hysteria, which is a new addition on Arena. It is symmetrical, so you have to be careful when deploying it. The boots can give hexproof and haste. We've got a Rising of the Day, giving all our creatures haste as well, and giving our legends one extra power. A rhythm makes our creatures uncounterable, and then we can choose between a plus one counter or haste when our creatures enter. And then we've got a pair of Arlen Cord Planeswalkers. The original can give a creature plus two plus two vigilance and haste, and then the zero ability makes a two two wolf token, which can also help us draw additional cards. And then we transform Arlen, where we can maybe minus one to deal three damage. And then the more recent Arlen can help us play creatures at instant speed, so that that's a way to play Voya end of turn, so we can maybe dodge a Sorcery Speed Sweeper or some other removal, and then we can untap and maybe make some wolf tokens before attacking, so we get to draw even more cards. And then uh, starting with our mana acceleration, at one mana I'm also playing Avacyn's Pilgrim. This not an elf, but it does tap for white mana. Then we've got Delighted Halfling to make our legends uncounterable, so it can also be pretty nice when played early. And then of course Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, and Sentinel can tap an untapped creature to make one mana. And then at two mana, there's the Loam Speaker, Druid of the Cowl. We've got Incubation Druid, which is particularly synergistic if we get a plus one counter on it with Voya, because now it can tap for three mana instead of just one. Gala Greeters helps us make additional treasure. We've got a Leaf Gilder and then Paradise Druid. And then Arcane Signet, since it can immediately tap for mana, also made the cut. And then at three mana, we've got Cultivate getting two lands. We've got Elvish Rejuvenator as an elf that puts an extra land in play. Gwenna can tap for 2 mana, and then can also untap after we play Voyas, so is also quite synergistic. Visionary draws a card when it enters. Marwyn can grow over time, and then can make more and more mana. 
And Nyssa is especially powerful with her fetch lanes, potentially making two mana and finding an additional elf. Rishkar can also give us more counters and turn some of our non-mana creature elves into mana creatures. Provisioner can also work quite well with her fetch lanes, making additional treasure. Archdruid, of course, one of our more powerful elves, bumping the team and making green for each elf we control. Silvala also plays quite well with Voya, as it can often draw us a card and then afterwards make at least five mana. Then there's a Circle of Dreams, similar to the Archdruid, but this one counts each creature we control, so they don't have to be elves necessarily. Then the Lenore Tribe, also triple green, usually not a problem to cast these on the curve since we have so many green sources, most of our dual lands at least generate green mana. And then Oracle of Moldaya to play additional lands off the top. And then Mirari's Wake will double the mana produced by our lands, so it can also make it easier to redeploy the rest of our hand post Sweeper. And then we've got more elves here, with the Shepherd pumping the team into base power toughness 5-5, also making our spells uncounterable. Belt Collector will slowly grow over time. The Elites and Warmaster can make elf tokens. Visionary draws a card. Fauna Shaman can find any creature in our deck if we discard one. Then there's Evolution Sage to proliferate the plus one counters we might get from Voya, also plays well with our Planeswalkers. Imperius Perfect bumps our elves and can make additional tokens. Arwen can make a creature indestructible if we use the ability, so it can help protect Voya from a sweeper perhaps. Then there's a Tactician pumping the team, tapping for a three green. Fleetfoot Dancer as a hasty elf can also be a nice follow-up to Voya, so we can immediately attack and gain a ton of life back. And then we've got our pair of Tulsimirs, which can also offer a bit more removal, so could have put them in the removal section and provide both an elf and a wolf token. So these are also incredibly synergistic. And then we've got some more card draw with a Visionary. Whenever we play an elf, we can pay a green to draw. A Realm Walker to play our elves off the top of the deck. Guardian Project whenever a creature enters draws. And then Beast Whisper, whenever we cast a creature spell, draws a card. A Mask with Nexus will turn all our creatures into both elves and wolves, so it can definitely go off with Voya. And then a Roaming Throne will either name elf or wolf, depending on the board state. And finally, the Great Henge we can often play on the cheap once we have Voya on the battlefield. can also draw us extra cards and gain some life back. And then the mana base mostly focuses on green mana, so even the dual lands I want to make sure can produce green mana so we can cast these triple green spells on curve. And uh, we've got the surveil lands as well, since they have the basic land type, means we can still search them up with our fetch lands, such as the commercial district, and then the portico in white. And then, uh, yeah, just a nice set of mana fixing, fetch lands, and then your typical multicolor lands like Command Tower, Cavern, either naming Elf or Wolf, can also make our spells uncounterable. And uh, I avoid creature lands since we're mostly looking to curve out, and uh, playing a tap land early can definitely hurt us. But Castle Garenbrick can maybe still help, especially when paying for the commander attacks, and then the channel lands are kind of free utility. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Venifar. So they're gonna be cloaking some of their cards and maybe flickering them, who knows. We've got a decent hand. Paradise Druids into Arch Druids. Can generate quite a bit of mana. And I'm sure we'll find an artifact or enchantment to destroy. Can maybe save the fetch land to surveil later or to enable landfall. Opponent's going to surveil themselves and play Archdruid. Probably fine to attack for three. If they have removal, they're taking out the Archdruid first. Okay, so we can expect them to have a counter spell now. So maybe instead of playing Voya, we play Tulsimir. Although, honestly, we can just replay Voya next turn with the extra mana from Archdruid. It's not too difficult. So sure, we'll give that a try. Probably wanted to tamp the Arch Druid itself so we can attack with the Paradise Druid for three. Opponent has the counter spell. That's fine. And sure, we'll attack for two. So missed out on one damage. We'll just replay it next turn. Opponent deploys Venifar. And there's the first phase down card. Okay, so redeploy Voya. And pass a turn. And then we should be able to set up a pretty powerful attack next turn. 
So yeah, we'll see if they can turn this face up or maybe flicker it to kind of cheat an expensive card into play. Although there's not too many amazing flicker effects in just blue-green, most of them tend to be white. Alright, Primeval Titan, always powerful. Thanks to Castle giving them an extra mana here. So yeah, next turn they can just hard cast some powerful spell. So what's the best we can do? Play Tulsimir. Adding Elf and Wolf to the board. I guess we could uh, play Guardian Project first. Sentinel's good too, since it kind of pays for itself thanks to the Archdruid. And then want to make sure we have double white for Tulsimir, but that shouldn't be a problem. And then Project into Sentinel into Tulsimir. And attack. Should be fine. We get one, two, three, four plus one counters. So should trade for some stuff. Take out Primeval Titan. And then with Castle Garenbreak, we can maybe redeploy it next turn. Alright, let's see what our opponent can come up with. Some uh, mass bounce spell like Rivers Rebuke would be pretty effective. The opponent's got the flicker effects, like we mentioned, and Voring Clex Voice of Hunger. What they cheated into play, yeah, that's a good one. And now Seagate Restoration to draw a bunch. So we get punished for tapping our lands. Good thing we have an Archdruid. So we'll have to be very careful on uh, how we sequence our spells here, so we don't tap too many of our lands if possible. Now, if Tulsimir attacks, I guess we can force them to block with Vorinclex. So maybe we start there. Could play the Canopy Tactician first, but then we might end up wasting some mana. So let's just attack first. So Vorinclex down. Opponent will double block. And then now our mana is unlocked once again. So I'm going to start with Voya. And then we can play some more green spells afterwards. Warmaster is not bad. Let's see, I guess... We're a little short of casting Oracle, so yeah, we'll go for Elvish Mystic. Trigger Warmaster. And then I can still play the Boots. Okay, not a bad turn. Opponent's at 11, next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Assuming no shenanigans. So there's another phase down card. Opponent passes. They probably have an overloaded Cyclonic Rift in hand, is my guess. So I don't want to play more than I need to. So I guess we just start by attacking. Could maybe make some mana with Archdruid first and put that to use. Since that mana would go to waste otherwise. So casting, let's say, an Oracle of Moldaya is basically free. I get to draw with Guardian Project. Maybe play some lands off the top. Okay. Um, maybe play a fetch land. Get rid of the halfling. Could get a surveil land, but may need the extra mana. Vandal on top. And then anything else we want to do? I guess play Canopy Tactician, draw a card. I'm still assuming we have lethal if we attack all out. And I haven't tapped any of my lands, which is kind of the key here. So we don't waste any mana if they Cyclonic Rift. 
Alright, no Cyclonic Rift, it seems. So, this should be enough. Can still activate the Warmaster as well. And uh, damage can happen. Alright, we got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, what do we think of our hand? A redundant haste enabler against dinosaurs. Mass hysteria can definitely backfire. But we still have Signet, Rising, Sylvala. Yeah, we're kind of missing a one mana accelerant or some other elf to ramp us into Voya. So I think this is a mulligan. Alright, this is a bit better. Turn one Pilgrim. Turn two Incubation Druid. Turn three Voya, hopefully. Although I guess we do have some tap lands to work around. Although with a pathway, I can play Crag on two, and then we should be fine. Assuming the Pilgrim survives. Alright, now with the forest, our problems are solved. Can even attack for one. So we'll see if they have an answer to a turn three Voya. Three mana. And a sword tooth. That's fine. So we will get an attack in. So now it's all about trying to play some elves. Uh, if I attack, we also put a counter on Incubation Druid, so it makes three mana. So how about we play Fleetfoot Dancer, attack with it and Voya, and then I can still play Guardian Project second main. Although possible that just playing more creatures is correct, on the off chance that they have a board wipe. This uh, sets us up a little bit better. And we should still have lethal next turn if they just play a creature. So they're unlikely to reach the city's blessing. Pantlaza hits Hulking Raptor. Okay, so they've got two blockers and we drew a roaming throne and our opponent concedes. So yeah, we can do a little bit of math here. But uh, the play is probably a roaming throne naming Wolf to double Voya's trigger. I uh, can also play another elf, either Rejuvenator or Realmwalker, before attacking. So we end up with uh, three elves on the battlefield. Voya triggers twice, so that's six counters to our entire team. And uh, yeah, with both of these having trample, that's likely enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gideon of the Trials, often a controlling white deck. So we have some decent tools against control, the boots to immediately give haste, a planeswalker is going to be effective, but we're kind of lacking some early mana acceleration, so this hand may just be a little too slow. Alright, this is a little bit better. Should find a target for Reclamation Sage. And then Guardian Project is a good way to provide a bit of card advantage. Still missing another elf to combine with the Sentinel. Opponent with an authority, so potentially a target for Reclamation Sage. It would have made our haste effects from our first opening hand quite a bit worse when our creatures enter tapped. Alright, opponent answers our sentinel, not the end of the world, since it wasn't doing much for us, and now a giver of runes to maybe protect a future creature. Can use Windswept Heath to fetch up our Surveil land to give us a bit more card selection. And now Ghostly Prison punishes us for attacking with multiple creatures. So that's probably what we want to answer with Rexage. And then get one of our surveil lanes 
don't think it matters too much which one. And Elvish Mystic we could keep. And then I might just play it right now, since it's not like the prison's bothering me too much. I guess it gives him an extra mana for Nykthos. Probably doesn't matter too much. And then if we draw another one mana elf, we can maybe go project plus play it, or we could immediately play Voya. Opponent's got a few creatures on the battlefield, so a sweeper is less devastating. And then could play Cavern named Wolf, although I believe the white quote unquote counter spell other than uh, Mana Tithe doesn't actually counter, it just sends a spell back. But uh, on the off chance that they have a Mana Tithe, I guess we can name Wolf here. So they might have Reprieve in hand, and they're confused about whether or not they can counter Voya. Alright, that resolves. And then next turn we can maybe put Reclamation Sage to use. And Gideon can pay the ward on Voya. Although it can still attack and give us more counters. So they actually target the Mystic. Now it's my turn. Okay. So Reclamation Sage, Ghostly Prison, Voya attacks Gideon. Seems like a good starting point. Or I can just play Guardian Project and pay the two. Yeah, that's probably fine as well. And I guess Prison doesn't even trigger if we attack a Planeswalker, so never mind. Opponent can chump and protect with Giver, but we'll still trample over. And I could also use Iganjo here if I really wanted to. Doesn't seem all that important, but maybe decreasing their devotion's worth it. And then we can still play Guardian Project. which may get reprieved. Nope. Okay, let's see what they've got next. Sunfall, yep. Well, we've got our Guardian Project to hopefully recover. So, let's say we go Gala Greeters, Provisioner, and then save Reclamation Sage for next turn. Cultivate's also decent, but we'll make a treasure here. And then with the Provisioner we can make another one. And I guess we'll play a Signet. Okay. So we're getting back on the board. Opponent foretells what's probably a Doomscar. and get to untap and find Shepard. That can definitely do some damage if we activate the ability here to pump our elves. But uh, yeah, we'll start with Reclamation Sage, see what's up. Take out Ghostly Prison. Could also take out the Incubator Token, but doesn't bother me too much. And then keep making treasure. It's gonna make it easier to replay our commander. Not planning on playing it just yet, especially if our opponent has a Doomscar in exile. For now, can maybe just cultivate and build up our mana some more. Alright, Mass Hysteria. That can give our creatures haste, but now Authority kinda nerfs it. So we'll cultivate. And make more treasure. And then I think we hang on to the Allosaurus Shepherd. 
and don't really want to trade for the incubator either, so we'll just pass the turn. Mass Hysteria is symmetrical, so probably don't want to play it unless we deal with the authority first. Right, opponent redeploys Gideon. This is a plane worth saving. My oath remains unbroken. And Rhythm, another haste effect, although at least this can also give us a plus one counter with a riot. So yeah, interesting spots. Can take out Gideon thanks to the Shepherd's ability. So let's start there. And then kind of force him to cast Doomscar. Although at this point with all this mana we could easily play Voya several times. But uh... Let's try this. Activate Shepherd. Gideon down. And then we have enough pressure on the battlefield where we don't need to overextend. But uh, I guess playing Rhythm's fine here. Possible they have some sweepers that hit all non-land permanents, which is maybe a reason to hold back. Doomscar wipes our creatures. Alright. So time for Voya. And an Archon prevents us from double spelling. That's kind of annoying, since our deck doesn't have much removal for it. So, yeah, play Voya, I guess. Can still draw additional cards next turn. And then now with the Guardian Project. Go for a counter, since it enters tapped. And then Beast Whisper would also be quite nice. Although, can only cast one spell. But yeah, opponent needs to answer Voya. Gideon kind of works, although we'll still get to draw each turn. And they can't pay the ward. So yeah, Gideon's just gonna take a beating here. Can uh, play a Beast Whisper for starters. Or maybe see what we draw Voya first. Even though we maybe missed out on a plus one counter here. Yeah, maybe it was worth it to play an elf first, so we guarantee take out Gideon. But having them jump with Archon might actually be better for us. As we now get to have some fun. Although next turn we could also go crazy, giving our creatures haste. So there's quite a few options. I guess Silvala having haste also generates a ton of mana for us. So I don't mind uh, playing this with haste. Could also play Mass Hysteria. I guess never mind, there's still authority to worry about. But uh, yeah, Oracle of Moldaya is not bad. Give this a plus one counter. See if we can play some lands of the top. Boots we don't need have plenty of haste enablers already. So we can fetch a Surveil land. Once again, don't need Druid. Play a land. And a Leaf Gilder coming up. So don't want to overextend into another board wipe necessarily. Yeah, let's just hold back. And then if we do get to untap, Silvala will generate quite a bit of mana with our six powered Voya. Play a land, play a fetch land. Can fetch away some petal grove. I think we're out of surveil lands now though. Roaming throne could be fun. So could draw into it by playing, let's say, a beast whisper here. And give this a counter. Draw of Guardian Project. Another land on top. So how crazy do we want to go? Yeah, I think we're fine adding more to the board since we get to draw two cards for each creature we play. And then Roaming Throne either names Elf or Wolf here. 
Elf works better with a Beast Whisper. And uh, if our opponent's got a board wipe, then naming Wolf probably doesn't help us too much. Alright, found Bodyguard, gives us some removal. And I guess we'll keep going, playing some of these Elves out. Can still activate Sylvala for six additional mana. Yeah, I don't think we have many more answers to authority. Maybe a Boseju we can channel. Alright, Leaf Grand Visionary can also draw us quite a few cards, especially with Roaming Throne in play. Might be overextending now, but again, we're drawing two cards per creature, so can't be too bad. Our opponent seems to have a response. Mana Tithe, so they actually had it. No need to pay. Make some green mana. Okay, Circle Dreams. And then we can pay double green to draw with our Visionary here. Yeah, this would have been super lethal if it weren't for authority. Alright, and then sure I'll play Lenore Elves. Can now Fateful Absence Gideon as well if we'd like. Probably Dawn drawing cards. Okay. And then can go to attackers. Everything's enormous. We still have a chance. Did not draw any answers to the uh, authority here. So we'll end turn. And then keep seven cards. Tulsimir, Bodyguard, Dancer, Mirari's Wake, Archdruid, maybe a Fateful Absence, and a Dwinnan's Elite. Evolution Sage could also be pretty decent with uh, Voya, but if they wipe the board, then we lose all our counters anyway. So something like this. Okay. The One Ring will protect them. So we can't take them out next turn. I could use my treasures to play Mirari's Wake to then double all the mana produced by our lands. Thalia, that's fine. Could get rid of it with a bodyguard, but it's not really bothering me. So yeah, if only we could destroy this authority and get lost over Fateful Absence would have made a big difference. Can probably draw into whatever answer we have for authority, but the One Ring will still protect them. I guess we'll start with Mirari's Wake. And then just play an Elf, doesn't matter too much which one. Find Nissa. We are getting the opponent a little bit more life with authority. Just want to find an answer to this authority so we can hopefully next turn attack with our hasty team. So play Domri. Can fight Thalia, although it might actually be an advantage to keep it in play. Can still play Nissa. Plus a fetch land to find more action. Arlen's not bad. This 
small concerns that we end up decking. A Realm Walker I also wouldn't mind drawing. And then Gwena is next. So not quite finding Boseju yet. Just play a Planeswalker, doesn't get swept up. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, that's probably good enough for now. Attack with Voya and the team just to get some plus one counters. Opponent actually throws Thali under the bus. I guess that's the downside of attacking. This is a very slow animation. So I don't think there's anything else we need to cast. I want to hold back for another sweeper here. And uh, yeah, we'll just pass it back. Can maybe play some more enchantments, but again, they might have those mass removal effects. We'll just discard some lanes. And uh, what else? All right, something like this. Opponent gets to draw two cards with the one ring. And blind obedience, we don't mind. I guess it's another authority-like effect. And now cataclysmic gearhulk. Alright, that's not the end of the world here, since we can even keep a roaming throne as our artifact. So that plus Voya should still present lethal next turn. Alright, so we'll keep Arlen. Probably go for Mirari's Wake. And then Creature make it Voya. And then Artifact make Roaming Throne. And that should be it. Alright, wasn't too bad. And then, end of turn, we could play the Bodyguard, since there's no risk of the opponent removing it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Turgrid, a discard deck, and we've got a fine hand. Probably fetch Stomping Ground, turn one Halfling, turn two Cultivate, set up Voya. Now, of course, our opponent's going to be packing some Edict effects, which get around the protection, the ward from Voya. So it doesn't line up all that great, necessarily. But as long as we have enough creatures on the battlefield, we can maybe play around those. And we're off to a decent start, at least. So I want to get an untapped green source. Cultivate getting probably just double forest. And then turn three, we can already play a five drop. Opponent with a guardian idol. Yeah, we can make it Voya. If they have an edict that just makes us sacrifice any creature, it's still protected. And it applies the most pressure if we get to untap with it. There are some effects that make us sacrifice two creatures. Those would be very effective. For now, just Arcane Signets and a Cold Steel Heart. So they are ramping. Could maybe see a board wipe next turn. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll still play Tulsimir before attacking. So we get to draw more cards and get more counters. Voya reunited with Voya. And then we can attack. All right, something like a Blood on the Snow here would be pretty effective. 
Otherwise, we're definitely threatening lethal next turn, and yeah, our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Urza, Lord Protector, so kind of an artifact control deck. Our hand seems a little too fair and not quite explosive enough, especially on the draw. This is better. Reclamation Sage will certainly come in handy. And we could already play turn two Marwyn. May not resolve. Opponent's got a memory lapse. And now a power stone we're definitely gonna destroy. So didn't get to develop our mana as much as we would have liked. Opponent going for a Pact of Negation actually, so they will have to pay for that next turn. And then looking for land I think. With the land we can play Voya and have it resolve. Now probably leaning Marwyn plus Pelt Collector. And hope they don't have a board wipe. It's gonna be a Paradox Engine, yeah that can definitely combo off here. So we have five, six, seven mana. Can play Gala Greeters and then still play Voya as Marwyn picks up a counter. Can't quite give Voya haste with Rising of the Day. And then I have to tap my mana carefully. Could also just play Rising and then next turn play Voya. So we can immediately attack. Yeah, I guess that has its merit as well. And then do I play Nissa? Probably hold it back. In case I do have a sweeper next turn. So we'll see if our opponent can combo off here. Talisman's a good starting point. Untap Power Stone. So they can make a bunch of mana. Jace can bounce Marwyn at the very least. We can figure you've already lost. You just don't know it yet. Think back. Although we can still play a hasty Voya. So let's see here. Play Nissa, play a land. It's gonna be one short. This can make a treasure, since I don't think we'll have lethal if we attack all out, or do we? So let's say we go for plus one counter, Pelt Collector also grows. We have three elves, so each creature gets three counters, so that's nine. So it would be 19. Yeah, I guess we have lethal regardless, even with uh, Talisman gaining them one life. So I'll just make a treasure. And ignore Jace, and go face. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Sorin Grim Nemesis, so black-white control deck. This hand's missing a few colors and is a little too slow. This is better. A Lanor Elf setting up maybe a turn two Provisioner. Or maybe better, a Lanor Tribe. Although it looks like they have an answer. Okay. So we'll play Visionary and then probably Tribe on three. Way to play Provisioner until we can play a fetch land afterwards, ideally. So I do want to make sure I play a green source for Tribe. And then Rockfall Veil is perfect. Opponent ramping nicely. So play the Tribe. And we'll see if they can remove the tribe. Shield root is acceptable. So we've got a few ways we can approach this. So let's say we 
use tribe to cast provisioner play fetch land which makes two treasures then we can play voya and then still have some extra mana yeah that looks good could just get basic planes Play Voya and pass it back and then if they cast a board wipe at least they also lose their own shieldred and if they don't next turn we could absence right, just a soul partition it's gonna take up their entire turn and then no need to send back to the command zone can just play it from exile so I don't think think we want a Fateful Absence Shielder just yet. We'll just take the hit for now. Arlen's not bad. So maybe slight change of plans. It's not to Arlen that gives haste, otherwise we would maybe play that one first. So yeah, just replay Voya. Keep making treasure here. And then we'll still have Absence at the ready. And maybe next turn we'll take out Shieldred, make some Wolves so we can draw more with Voya without taking damage. Opponent's gonna pass a turn. Alright, in that case, probably do this now. They most likely have more spot removal for Voya. Yep. Once again takes up their whole turn. And we can still replay it for 7 mana. Masked Vandal does not have a creature in Graveyard to exile. If we had it in hand, we maybe would have let Voya go to the Graveyard and then exile it with Vandal, send it back to the Command Zone. But we didn't know about it yet. So in that case, play this. Make a treasure. Replay Voya. And then with Arlen, I guess we could play Voya at instant speed. You wanna fight me and my patience, my kid. These two attack. And so if they cast a board wipe, we just float three mana in response and then cast Voya afterwards. Sorin is acceptable. All right, this next turn should be pretty sweet. And the yeah, opponent scoops it up, they didn't find what they were looking for. End of turn, play Voya, untap, maybe add some more elves to the board before attacking to see if we can set up lethal. If not, maybe make some wolves and draw a ton of cards. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emara, green-white tokens. What do we think of our hand? Mass Hysteria, definitely a double-edged sword in a matchup like this. Giving Amara haste sounds pretty bad for us. So, yeah, this hand's pretty lackluster. This is better. Turn to Gwenna sets up turn 3 Voya. Even untapping Gwenna in the process. Curse of Silence gonna make it a little bit more expensive now. Definitely one of the better answers in white. Now we do have Reclamation Sage, which can still blow it up, but we'll start with Gwenna. And then now we can cultivate, play Rex Sage. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Get our white mana. And then next turn, play Voya plus Rishkar even. Not expecting too many board wipes out of the token deck, but maybe I should be worried. So instead of playing Rishkar now, we'll uh, save it for next turn. And then for now play Domri, which can make mana. Play our commander. 
and tapping Gwenna, and then we can still get a nice attack in. And then next turn play Rishkar. If they don't have a board wipe, I assume we're in pretty good shape. Put might make some tokens here at instant speed. No, just cycling a wilt. Yeah, if they had two one ones at instant speed, they could have traded for my Rex Age and Lenor Elves. Opponent does actually have a Day of Judgment, so I'm glad I didn't overextend, but still pretty effective here. So I should be able to replay Voya. There's Amara, and into the north, so we will get to attack. And then we want to play out as many elves as possible. And we can just fight Amara now. Get to draw a card as well. And Rhythm could be a nice way to deal the finishing blow. Should they have another board wipe? Just a Toski, which we can uh, kind of ignore and trample over it. Give this one haste. Play Cavern on Elf. And then... We can uh, remove a blocker just in case. Probably should have fought with Voya because they had a one mana answer. And then attack. Could also use our elves with plus one counters for mana to activate the shepherd's ability, but I think it works out better to just attack here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Thalia and the Gidrock monster. And yeah, 4-4 four, four, First Strike Death Touch lines up pretty favorably against Voya. Does this hand compete? Feels a little slow without any 1 or 2 mana accelerants. This is better. And with Shepard we've got kind of an alternate win condition where we can pump the rest of our team. Now we're still missing red mana, but I'm sure we'll find it eventually. Alright, there it is. And then a Great Henge could be a decent follow-up to Voya. And since next turn we're playing Tactician, we may have the mana to both play Voya and Great Henge in the same turn. Opponent with a Halfling. So next turn they can play Thalia and play an extra land. Probably want to play Igancho here since non-basics will enter tapped later. And hit for two. And then hope to untap with our Tactician. If not, we can still play Voya. And then with a Great Hench, we can hopefully outdraw our opponent. Arlen can make some Wolves. So I guess we'll be one mana short of casting the Great Hench. Voya only a 5-5 five five since it's not an Elf. But uh, we can deploy it next turn. Uh, I'll hang on to the Rex Sage. And then we'll pass it back. Put on ramps with Glimpse Decor. Three cards left in hand. And if they've got a Sweeper in hand, that could be pretty painful. But no attack, so Thalia playing defense. Okay, so now we can play Great Henge. A Realm Walker draws a card. And names Elf. I don't think we're attacking this turn. Okay, and then I can still play Circle of Dreams off the top, or we can play Arlen. Um, I mean, Circle of Dreams still draws a card, so it seems fine. And then maybe next turn we can go all out. 
Goon is gonna take out Voya, so we don't get a chance to attack, but now with Circle of Dreams it's pretty trivial to redeploy. Okay, bounce it back. And Greyhavens to Scry. And they do have an answer for the Circle of Dreams. That's okay, still have a decent amount of mana to work with between Henge and Tactician. And our opponent's on empty. So at least we're discouraging an attack. So next up, this is 7 mana. So should be able to play Nyssa and then still deploy Voya. Could also play that instant speed with Arlen perhaps. And I guess, uh, yeah, our non-basics do enter tab because of Thalia as well. And that's it for now. Thalia attacks, opponent's digging. And yeah, if they fail to find a great answer here, we probably get to attack for lethal here. If I play Mask with Nexus, I also get to draw for each creature I control since they all turn into wolves. So would have been pretty sweet to play here. All right, so we got to see this Voya Brawl deck in action, and it definitely feels like one of those top tier decks, especially if you can get Voya down early on turn three, ideally, but uh, even later, especially with haste, it can still be incredibly effective. So definitely recommend it if you like this sort of play style. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.